You guys have been requesting nonstop that I make a big version of my little mini elephant, so that is apparently what we're doing today. My name is Lori, and you are watching The Icing Artist. To get started, I baked two half sphere vanilla cakes that we are gonna combine to make one big sphere fat elephant ball, basically. Just gonna cut off the bottom of one of the spheres slightly so that way it sits nice and flat. It makes it a lot easier than trying to decorate a ball that just kind of wants to roll off the table. Because there's not a lot of color in this cake, I thought we'd throw some color in the middle, so I dyed my buttercream a light blue, the same color as we're gonna do its ears, just to add some kind of color to this cake. Gave the whole cake a nice thin crumb coat, and then once I was done smoothing that out, I gave it just a thicker coat of icing. I noticed when I add just a little bit of a thicker coat of icing on the outside and not just that thin crumb coat, it helps give me a smoother fondant finish. If you guys have not yet subscribed to this channel, please join the icing family and click that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to click that notification Bell. Now that is done, it is time to roll out our gray fondant. So I rolled that out nice and big. You need a lot of extra fondant when you're covering a sphere because when you drape it over, you really need that kind of big extra fondant that's around the edges that you can really tuck in underneath. So I just kind of pulled the fondant out and then pushed in with my hands and smoothed that all around the bottom edge. And instead of just like trimming it off from this point, what I noticed if I trim off a larger portion around the outside edge and then I push that fondant in and tuck it really tightly under that cake and then trim it off, I get a perfect fondant finish under the sphere without any of those wrinkly edges. I know that I seem way too excited for this, but spheres are kind of tricky to cover in fondant without getting all those like wrinkles at the bottom and where it like puckers up and you can see the icing underneath is such a pain. First thing I'm gonna make for this elephant is going to be that trunk. I want to make it first so I can set aside to dry so it kind of holds its shape a bit. And of course, I just added Tylos powder into my fondant to help it dry a little bit stiffer. So I just rolled my fondant into a log and then kind of bent it. I thought it'd be cute if the trunk was kind of you know, like coming up and around, but still enough fondant to be able to stick to the elephant's body so it doesn't go falling off. And just use my fondant tools to add a little hole at the tip of the trunk and use my hands just to kind of pinch it around. I don't know if you guys have seen any videos of elephants, but they take their trunk and they like pick things up with them. So it's kind of like a little hand. Ben just added two pieces of flower wire into the trunk to help hold it to the body and set that aside to dry for now. Next up are gonna be those ginormous elephant ears. Now for my mini cake, they kind of look like mouse ears, but you guys loved it. So that is the exact same thing we're gonna do again. I rolled up my fondant nice and thick. I cut out a large circle, then just placed a cake pan on top of it to cut out the curve of what I'm hoping is gonna match up to the curve of that sphere. Then for the only splash of color on the outside of this cake, I cut out a blue circle, layered that on top, and I just flipped that ear over so I could cut off the excess. Again, just gonna add that flower wire into it so those ears will stick up nice and straight and set those aside, just harden up slightly for now. In the meantime, we can make its big feet and its cute little face. For its feet, I just wanted them to look kind of clunky, so I just made like a fat kind of cone-like shape and then I used my paring knife and cut that on an angle so that way the feet can tuck in really tightly underneath the elephant. Then using a circle cutter, I'm going to make those big toes and we are gonna be painting these toes later, kind of like elephant nail polish. I have made almost every animal there is out there into cake. If you guys want to see that full playlist, just click the eye. Even though no one's really gonna see the tail, I feel like you can't not make a tail on an elephant. It's just weird. So I rolled my fondant into a little log, flatten the one end, and then just use my knife to kind of make little hairs, just cut through it like that. It's the exact same technique I used when I made like a fondant broom and just stuck that on the back of the elephant. Now that my trunk has been drying, for a little while it is ready to stick into the cake so I just stuck that right into the center of the cake and now I can build the rest of its face around it. For its eyes I just cut out some white ovals, black ovals and then layered those up. I wanted these eyes to look super cute and big because after all Dumbo is coming out this week and he's literally the cutest elephant so I really wanted to have those like really big eyes. It was kind of like the cartoon version. When I added the ears in I just kind of cupped them forward so that way they had a little bit more of a shape to them and then just carefully stuck those into the cake. So you don't want your fondant drying too long because you want to be able to cup it, but long enough that it's gonna kind of hold its shape without like flopping over. We are doing an amazing giveaway for hitting 200,000 followers on Instagram. We are working with the Shoe Bakery and we are gonna be giving away six purses. I have three of these little ice cream sandwiches purses, which I love, and each of them are gonna be coming with these little ice cream sandwich wallets. I think they're so cute. But we also have three. <laughs> 
<laughs> of these unicorn purses, which are totally adorable. I'm obsessed with these. And each of the unicorn purses are also gonna be coming with the wallet. So we're gonna be giving away six totals. So if you guys wanna be a part of this giveaway and a chance to win one of these, make sure to go follow us on Instagram. I will leave the link down below and send the shoe bakery some love because this stuff is amazing. And just as like a congratulations to me, they were nice enough to send me these amazing shoes. Look at these, I am obsessed. I have no idea which outfit I'm gonna pair these with, but these are truly amazing. So thank you so much for sending these to me. And like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be doing elephant nail polish. It's not really nail polish, it's more just his toes should be white. So I just used this like white food coloring and a paintbrush and I just kind of painted that on and it seemed to actually work pretty well. But what I noticed with the white, it seems to crack. You know what? It looks all right. This elephant has been walking a long time every single day. It's his nail polish is not perfect. And because of the Dumbo movie, I figured there was no way I could make an elephant without making that like classic feather. So I just rolled out my black bond and cut out kind of a feather-like shape and used a couple different bonded tools to add the texture and the feather-like shape to my feather. Feather-like details to my feather. And we are done. I hope that you guys love this big elephant as much as you love the tiny elephant because man, I got so many comments from you guys to make this big one. Thank you guys so much for everybody who requested this and for everybody who's watching. Don't forget to go over to Instagram and follow us so you can be a part of this amazing giveaway. And I will see you guys again back here next week so we can make something else in a cake. Bye guys.